Wait for Hi, guys. This is another Paradigm Shift radio show, after show. So let's talk about more interesting subjects. And let's go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Time, my parents picked you out as a knight, and I had nothing to do with it. So, like, when I saw you, I was like, Oh, there's something different about you, dude. This is like I'm going back to uh, the movie Titanic, where uh, like, yeah, the PC at random, and then you know, we got in love with her. <laughs> That's amazing. So, you both remember you both remember meeting each other before. Oh yes, of course. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and when I was a college student, my past life, uh, it was around this. I don't like. I was in a rec hall. It was my professor was boring as hell, and she was in the library with a Tibetan Book of the Dead, and somehow she just got pushed out of her chair, got thrown into one of the bookshelves, and uh, like brought her back, and I had to be the one to go. With it. Come over and save her. Yeah. <laughs> and the funny part is the book pushed me and the book so. made me break my neck and back. <laughs> That's the funny part. And I remember yeah, I being pronounced dead. And I did recall that I uh, read the Tibetan book to her. Yeah. Like, although, like, it got to my hands. Uh huh. <laughs> Well, that's how I be, that's how I know the Tibetan Book of the Dead in the nutshell. <laughs> you keep going uh, in and out, Andy. Is there something with your microphone? Maybe you could change. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, on my, I'm actually talking on my tablet. That's why. Oh okay. Well, hey, like for the people that are watching on YouTube, this is like a hangout for the continuation of the uh, what the decoding the wisdom of the Kabbalah. So, like, does anybody have any thoughts on the radio show or what was said? Thank you, Tony. I loved it. Everything felt, it resonated so much with other stuff that I'm learning about, like, sacred geometry and the Merkaba. Like, it all connected, and uh, I'm excited to learn more. Do you, you knew more about it, Tony, right? What would you like to talk about? Uh, well, the Kabbalah, just for me, uh, I did learn some stuff tonight that I didn't know about, but one thing I was talking about in the uh, in the chat room was about the tripod, which, I mean, a lot of people don't understand that that was actually added, like, a lot, lot later, you know, because uh, I believe it was in 1492, uh, the Jews got persecuted and had to move out of Spain, and in 1942, of course, you know, they had World War II, so... And yeah. Isaac Luria, uh, he's the one that wrote the Lurianic Kabbalah, and it was like, okay, of 1400s, 1500s, you know, so, and it's been added to over this over the uh, years, but it's not the original Kabbalah. It was one person's uh, attempt to explain why all the bad yeah. shit happened. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, think, I thought that that's something I should definitely bring into uh, uh, understanding and perspective. I basically just recently learned about it myself a couple of days ago whenever I started looking into it because of, on Merlin's Mystery School we were studying Dayats and, and uh, the knowledge the hidden, the hidden Sephiroth and the clay pot that didn't come up or clay pot or however you want to pronounce it. So, but yeah, it's a majorly new addition to the Kabbalah. 
not necessarily, you know, it's something to study and to look at to see yeah. how the whole uh, mentality and thought process occurs to create a system of consciousness. But that's pretty much what the Kabbalah is. And it, I mean, it's more than that, obviously. I mean, but it's, uh, in its essence, it's a way to uh, explain somebody's journey through the consciousness of emanation. And all those different spheres. Now each sphere is connected by a path, and of course that's called path working. And uh, each path is represented by a Hebrew letter, but also a tarot card, a trunk. Oh and wow! If you yeah. take, and if you take those trunks and you you do them one at a time, depending on where you want to go, like the path of the flaming sword goes from Malkut up to Keter in like a zigzag form, so it hits all of them, going from the left to the right, you know, through Tiferet, and back to left and right, but that's the main thing, you go from Malkut to Yassad, and then over to your left, if you're reading it, you go over to the left, then and right, you know, and then you crisscross upward, but yeah, and you can find a path, the path of the flaming sword uh, on the internet. What, uh, the key thing of the path of the flaming sword is the, uh, the trumps, um, because when you start like contemplating each one of those trumps. Uh, I can't remember exactly which one's what at the moment, but it, depending on what, uh, from what uh, sphere of consciousness you want to go to or what energy you want to deal with, you can get there by contemplating a tarot card and just look and see all the different meanings to it. There's actually a tarot contemplation ritual in the Secret Order of the, the, Sacred Order of the Golden Dawn. That uh, is that. That's exactly what it is. It's path working. Uh, Chill Swan has something very similar that I. It's called shadow work, but it's not near as uh, sanctioned. You know, it's not near as uh, um, and, and narrow. Uh, with me, what do you know? Um, what would go with the the first card, the fool? Uh, the cool. fool. I have to look it up. It's been so oh, long. don't worry about it then. I just I'm starting to learn about them by going deep into Back each card. Back. I will take a meditation uh -huh. where I visualize myself in the woods, and then the card comes into my hand, and then it opens like a portal. And I step through, and I exactly. receive yeah. messages from each of the beings in the card. You know, I smell the air, um, I feel what it's like in that environment, and then I receive this kind of guidance from each of the cards, and it's been really empowering and enlightening. Definitely. What you're describing is exactly the tarot contemplation ritual. I didn't want to get deep into it, but yeah, that's exactly what it is. You take yourself yeah. inside the card. Yeah. It's yeah, if I remember correctly, the fool and the mages, I think they're at the top of the tree of life, like in the mm -hmm. uh, supernals. I love the fool because it kind of represents the speaker, you know, us. We're on this awakening journey. We are throwing away, not throwing away, but we are freeing ourselves of the past and diving headfirst into this adventure of learning who we are and expanding our consciousness. That's what the fool is all about, and I think that's awesome. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but to me, the fool is like, you know, it's, it's when you first start off on that journey, pretty much like you yeah. said, you know, it's all, there's always a new beginning. Once mm -hmm. you reach the end, there's never really an end. It's a new beginning. Yeah, because, the cycle. You know, it's like a cycle. Yeah, it's the, it's the cycle of the wheel. So any, mm -hmm. any time that you reach the end of something, there's a new beginning to something else that adds on to that ad infinitum as you continue to grow. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of cycle like a whole year over and over again, becoming all these different people and experiences as you learn new things, and then you go right back and keep on learning new things, starting over with new beginnings. I love it. <laughs> and I love that everything is connecting to each other: the Kabbalah, the Tarot, sacred geometry, all of it. I'm just finding connections with everything. Ariana, there's actually more connection than you think, really. No. <laughs> uh, and Buddhism, like 18,000 years uh, years old, is actually connected to Kabbalah also. Yeah? So, from my tradition. 
Mm. I, 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 I. Awesome. Yeah, Tony, the way I can say it, Zong Chen. Oh my god. I still remember that. Hey, I didn't know how to pronounce it at the time. I'm on the learning progress. It's <laughs> Zong Chen. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm well, sure. it, 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 it's got that Wookiee spelling. <laughs> I'm sure, Andy, I'm sure they would all get amused by the Lord and Lady story I told you. Uh, I will. <laughs> I, had a, I think I have a question everybody could answer. We could go around and take turns. What, um, what really resonated with you during the radio show? Like, was there something that really just clicked and felt right? I would love to hear everybody's different experiences with that. Uh, Tony, you want to start? Yeah, I like time uh, to make it. Okay. Yeah. What was the question? I'm talking to Brendan as well on. Uh, oh. On the, okay. Uh, the blog talk, right. so. Oh, we can we could start with Kristen. It's um, what's something that really resonated with you during the radio show? Like, what really clicked and felt right? Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, th I believe it's whenever he started talking about the emanations, mm -hmm. and how, uh, because they really can be both a, a, a boon and a bane. Uh, it just depends on how you take it, because you can get like stuck in different ones of the spheres of consciousness, and uh, like if you if you're too merciful, for for example, you know, you, you it tends to uh, you get to be where people walk over you and uh, stuff mm -hmm. of that nature. But at the same time, you know, if you're in that pillar, if you're in the uh, pillar of severity, and you're in Gabura, and you you stay there, and you just basically uh, tune yourself with that particular energy, you wind up becoming cruel because you can't balance that with mercy. So you absolutely have to walk. You, even when you do the path of the flaming sword, that's to get to know each sephiroth. But then you want to do the middle pillar so you can keep a balance, because you have to know what you're balancing before you can balance it. You know, but once you find out what they are, then you know you can work on the balancing uh, aspect of that and go the path of the era, or the path of the flaming sword that gets you into touch and understanding each uh, sphere in order of. You know, in the best order avail um, that you sh really should work with them to get to know them each in such a way because you, you get to beauty first and then you kind of understand what that is between a balance of logic and emotion or uh, like uh, logic and intuitiveness. And you can kind of, once you've got that balance and you know what that balance is, then you can tackle the strength, Gabura, and then the mercy and start balancing those as well, but in Tifereth is where your balance is, the beauty. So yeah, you definitely want to, if you're doing the path of the flaming sword and working with the tarot, I think it's also important to do the middle pillar, or understand the middle pillar and the path of the arrow, which is what that is, is straight up the middle pillar. But yeah, those animations, uh, they, they've been called the, the different, uh, I guess, Manifestations from those emanations, <laughs> or all the Asians I'm speaking of, uh, is like the seven vices and the seven virtues. You know, if if, if you can learn from each one of the conscious, from the different uh, spheres of uh, consciousness, and if you learn, then you, what you'll do is you'll get to those virtues that uh, exist within each one of them. But they also contain vices as well. So you don't want to get hung up in one or the other. You want to be able to manifest all seven of those virtues. And if you feel a vice in any particular area, whether that be like slothfulness or idleness yeah. or cruelty, you know, those are all vices. And you'll want to balance that out with the opposite side and learn how to, you know, to get that motivated if you're in an idle position or slothfulness if you're, not, if you're just being lazy. Mm -hmm. And being idle and being lazy is two different things because idle... You're just kind of content, you know, with where, with where you're at and what you're doing, and you don't really think, you know, I don't need to know anymore. But yeah. slothfulness, you're like, oh, I need to know more, but I just don't feel like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so 
there are, there's different vices and virtues. That's where they get the seven deadly sins from and the seven mm-hmm. virtues. There's the seven bottom sephiroth on the tree of life. The top three are the untouchable supernals. Do you know of a, like a link or a book? I would love to learn more about this because that's something I really definitely need to work on in my path is finding a balance between all you know, not go too far in one direction because when I do, all the, the rest just kind of falls away and doesn't really work out and then I get all airheady and oh, yeah. know what yeah. to do about. <laughs> that's, that's what I like about the first thing that he did was he talked about uh, earthing yourself, grounding yourself, yeah. because you know, once you start working with these energies and meditating, it's that state of like, you know, you're lightheaded, you, you're not, you're, you're, you're way up above the earth as far as your consciousness is concerned, yeah. in that sense, not, not literally, but just in that sense, so you really want to be able to ground yourself, I've always talked about, there's a, a a neo-pagan ritual that comes from way back, even uh, um, Isa or Jesus, whatever you want to call him, did it when, uh, whenever they did the alleged uh, Last Supper with the, the cakes and ale, the wine and bread, because what that does is that grounds you. You're materially doing something. You know, you're eating, biting, chewing, and drinking. So you're earthing yourself. You're, you're taking yourself back. You know, into that. I don't know, I guess consuming nature, <laughs> if you will, where it's not as much all just light and uh, energy, but you're actually physically doing something. Uh, jogging in place, you can do that to ground yourself as well if you're feeling lightheaded, but not really fast, you know, or yeah. you get worse. Or take a walk. You know, uh, take your shoes off and walk <laughs> in some grass. I, today, I had an amazing meditation that Andy actually helped me to preach, and I received guidance from, I, I called a few different people afterwards to thank them and just tell them that I love them, and my dad reminded me that I need to be grounded, I need to take care of this earthly realm as well, you know, I can't just lose myself up here as much as it's wonderful feeling to be that high up there, but I don't want to get lost, I've got a ground, and I keep hearing that from people, so I've got my hematite, I'm going to keep doing that. <laughs> Oh, cool. um, but I wanted to hear from maybe Andy or Kristen or Deanna Stallon about what was relevant to you during the radio show. Well, I did partly listen to the, uh, the radio show about the, the Kabbalah, like especially like because I'm I've been researching about Kabbalah, soaps, and esoteric concepts for almost like four years of my life already, just like Tony. Nice. Yep. The thing is, is when it comes to esoteric concepts, what resonates with me is like the whole system itself already. Mm-hmm. Because just about it. When you look at it, do you also look at your mind, how it, it looks just like that, and how, like, if you were to look over Carl Jung's uh, or even Sigma Floyd's uh, counseling theories, they also uh, talk about the same thing, but you don't know it. Because I'm, I used to like use counseling as part of my treatment uh, plan for myself and like I found out that some treatment resonates with certain areas of the Kabbalah. Yeah, I would love uh, to yeah. talk about that more too. I'm actually a psych major, so. <laughs> I'm also a psych major. Mm-hmm. My associate's degree will be a recreational therapist. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Kristen, what was really relevant for you during the show? Well, I didn't really know much about the Kabbalah so much, uh, so I, I really love listening to a lot of it, but a lot, pretty much all the information, it does resonate with a lot of my, my beliefs and uh, just with, with being one with everyone and loving everyone and, and everything, and uh, I, I, I would love to, to research more of it because I don't know much about it. Um, but I, I was really interested in just listening to everyone. I, I would probably have to go back and listen to the whole thing again, yeah. and including what, <clears throat> and including what, uh, uh, you know, the rest of it that wasn't on air and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. What about what about you? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> the same kind of thing. You know, it just seemed like everything is connecting with each other. Like. 
gosh, I've had these amazing experiences with the star tetrahedron recently. Yeah. That imagining the Merkaba around me and seeing all these shapes that are all connected, like I don't know if you could see that. The flower of life, I drew this one, and you can tell that you can make any shape out of what is in that. It's yeah. hurting my brain yeah. in a wonderful way. Uh, <laughs> we study like the platonic solids. Plato yeah. actually found them there. Where did we find the platonic solids? That's actually <laughs> They actually found it, uh, the platonic solids through uh, the same concept that you're talking about. That's why people ask me, like, can you teach these solids to people? I say no, because it's already known to people. Yeah. I know. I feel like we're all tapping into this knowledge that we all have inside. Not a lot of people can feel that knowledge because by the time you know it, we're all God already. People can't control us anymore. That's what science, psychology, math, uh, even history also really show itself in forms of that area uh, what you're talking about. There is no such thing as, oh, this is social uh, science, which is a totally separate field from uh, biological science. It doesn't make any sense. In fact, I was at school and I was like, when did I learn all this in school? <laughs> I literally got errors in my class, and people were like, well, it's only one hour that you know everything. I tell them, just look at you know, all the concepts, and you'll understand it. Yeah. Is uh, Deanna still on? Maybe we can hear what was relevant for her. Are you still on? She was here. She was here. She was here. She was here. Oh, uh, can you do a little bit down? Come on. Yeah, it's great. I'm having a hard time hearing you guys, all of you. Yeah, nah, come on. Do right. you have any idea about the Kabbalah or anything? You're in my class, hello. <laughs> and tell me to do this. I do not have anything to say because I do not know much and I'm just listening and observing. No problem. <laughs> I like that. Or it looks like cloud. <laughs> And she's like, you can keep down it, it down because seriously, like, that would help you hear a lot better. I, I can't hear you at all anymore, Andy. She's like, you can keep down it down because that will help you hear a little better. Kristen, is there something that yeah. you wanted to learn about when you were listening to the Kabbalah and stuff? Like, was there anything that you just really, like, have to learn about now? <laughs> well, I wrote down a whole bunch of notes. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out all, like, um, you know, messed up. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I thought it was interesting when um, he was talking about the elements, like the earth to have things, fire to want things, but I didn't get the water and air one. I didn't get the water or air either, I was going to ask you. <laughs> no, I didn't get that one, but that one was interesting. Alright, so you want to know about the earth and the air one, right? First off, if you go into a new body, uh, yeah. Let's start from those two. Andy, uh, I, think you're, I think you're speaking too close to the microphone. It's like really staticky. Okay, can you hear me there? It, I don't know. I can't hear you at all, really. Are you having trouble hearing him too? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um. I did see that we got another person in the group, though. It, Woody, we yeah. talk about um, I don't know if the video show or we were listening, but we were all talking about what resonated with us while we were um, listening to the radio show. 
So if you're on and you want to talk, just let us know. Oh, did we lose Andy? Yeah, he's probably going to come back. Um, oh. Another thing that was interesting to me was um, when he was talking about um, like the number one of the concept of infinite great, like absolute yeah. beauty, and then the second was was duality, and the third one was goddess and stuff. That one, like it did, it really resonated with me. I think, um, and yes. I I do think that a lot of people do um, choose to to love God or Jesus before anybody else and stuff, and which we should well, love a, everybody, not just yeah, not jo not just like Jesus and God, like how the People are perceived to believe how it, it how the story is true. Okay, um, but also, like what? So here's what uh, what is going on in Kabbalah. When you first start out with single, number one, it's always unity. That's what every everything comes from from duality, which is two, which is female, male, opposites, and then from mm -hmm. three. Why is it that we always use Father, Son, or Mother, Son, and Holy Spirit? Is because that's part of humans, uh, humans' uh, connection. We are a trio. We're always mm -hmm. the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. It's yeah. a family. And yeah. then four is the element. Mm -hmm. I really, I resonated with the, the goddess aspect being number three, because in paganism, or at least the way that I've, practiced it for a while. Um, I, I like to view the goddess energy as maiden, mother, crone, and you see the cycle of birth, life, death, and rebirth, the creation, destruction, and so it really resonated with me that the goddess was the three, because that just seems like a very natural female number. Right, but remember, like, when it comes to three, it's not just simply a goddess. It's mm -hmm. God, goddess, and the son or the, yeah. the child. Yeah, there are lots of different symbolisms within that number. I actually, my, um, I recently had my numerology read, and my life path number was 33, which was so... Oh, oh you hit the jackpot. Yeah, oh. I know, right? <laughs> um, but you're lucky, because mine is a four. <laughs> What's that one? That means I'm like really practical, very, uh, I'm like uh, the pragmatic one. Yeah. <laughs> Christ consciousness right now. Oh, great. <laughs> um, Michael, we were all talking about what resonated with us during the radio show. Did you listen to the radio show? Are you eating? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Well, um, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look through my email to find my numerology reading that you sent me. Um, but I'm having trouble finding it. <laughs> oh, I recently looked up the number that I have been seeing since I was 13 years old. It's been following me. I used to be scared of it, and I wish that I had just looked it up back then. But I looked it up just a few days ago, 219, and it is completely relevant. Oh, yeah. Exactly what I'm doing. It's like supposed to be a message from the angels telling me to keep on doing this positive, uplifting work and helping others and just keep on doing exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I love um, it. Yeah. I, I keep seeing 333 now, and I'm like, whoa, and I read, I read the meeting, and... It's so cool. <laughs> and now now I want to go and study how the numbers, the symbolism that we were learning about with the Kabbalah. Yeah. I want to know those meanings as well for everything. Oh. Yep. Yeah. And here's, here's the interesting thing. Did you realize that in the Kabbalah there's a, a Sephirot named Da'az in there, and it resonates with the B666, which is... Oh, wow. Uh, which is the carnal number uh, below 777, which is the highest uh, form of consciousness, which is the next up, which is Kether. Oh. Hmm. Oh. And to be honest, I'm about to have six, uh, 666 friends on uh, my Facebook, so yeah, <laughs> I'm about to hit uh, the R's right now. 
I always loved that number. I never really had a negative connotation with it because oh, I, really? I, didn't, okay. I wasn't raised in a Christian environment, so I didn't have that negative connotation. I just had the really? more the metal song, you know, six, 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 number up. I love that. Right. <laughs> but to those of you who don't notice, I used to have my phone number used to, my home phone number used to be seven seven seven. Now I downgraded to six six six. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> scare away those who don't learn what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, um, Tony, if you're still on, could you, did you know much about the symbolism with the Kabbalah and numbers? I'd like to know more about that. I don't know. Uh, I believe that there is actually a correlation between the uh, the Kabbalistic numbers and uh, the numerology. Yeah. As far as I know, they are very similar because it, it's basically just a, a philosophical aspect, basically, of consider, considering what a number represents. Like yeah. uh, the aces in most of the suits of the tarot uh, are basically one. So they represent, for the most part, that raw energy of that element. Uh, mm -hmm. Wands, cups, swords, pentacles. Uh, wands being fire, cups being water, swords being uh, air, mental, and uh, pentacles, of course, being uh, like uh, the earth, the pentacle, discs, or what have you. And, and it really is just uh, almost like uh, a step-by-step -step way of looking at those elements in that in the nature of that numerological aspect so mm -hmm. uh, when you have one of uh, the uh, ace of wands you know it's like that raw fiery aspect where if it's like the two you know of uh, cups that's that first division of mm -hmm. uh, of water and they and what that what that represents and of course you can find the numerology on on Google and find out the more uh, detailed versions of it but yeah that's basically what it is so yes definitely the numbers of numerology uh, do coincide with uh, the numbers on the Kabbalah that's awesome everything is connecting oh. <laughs> let's see and also uh, well like I was saying in the chat box uh, mm -hmm. the Kabbalah it's not or its origin is in Hebrew but a majority of the writings on it is in Hebrew mm -hmm. because they are the keepers of it during this aeon time frame what have you and most of what their alphabet the alphabet is based on is a base 9 system where they do go 1 through 9 and then 10 through 90 100 through 900, 1,000 through 9,000, and so on. So uh, just because there's 10 numbers, or actually 12, basically, on the, uh, the seventh one, the Tree of Life, including the Hidden Deot, and uh, I can't remember the other one at the moment, but uh, so there's basically, there, there are 11, or if you... Uh, I'm not sure where you get 12 from, but uh, Colum said something about 12. I'm going to have to ask him about that when he gets in the hangout. But, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, anyway, they're base, not base 9, so and that goes right along with numerology, because not only is uh, Hebrew base 9, but numerology is also base 9. Uh, what I'm meaning by base 9 is you start from 1 and go to 9, you know, so, and then go you start back at 10 and then, you know, go to 90. So it's like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So it really just depends on how, uh, what the, how they're trying to represent the number on how they write it. I mean, I don't read or write Hebrew. I can recognize some of the letters and stuff like that. And uh, I do have correspondences that I can look up, you know, just kind of blow off my dusty book. <laughs> like, well, let's see here. Okay. <laughs> well, and that's basically what you have to do a lot. Like, it's just a lot of mages, that's what we have is just reference books whenever we want to use them. We don't keep all that information in our head. That's what we have in our laws. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's but, a good yeah. 
I've been in the symbol for pretty much every second now. Like, like animals come into my life, or I start seeing a number, anything. I will get a lot of symbolism, and it'll be relevant to what's happening to me. And it's like everywhere I look, there are messages coming. And oh, I love it. I love it. Am I repeating back on your guys' end? I'm hearing my own voice now. Oh, you might be repeating back somewhere. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't think You're it's on my it. end. No, I got headphones on. I forgot it. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, but that reminded me of this book, which Kristen lent me, The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life. I'm like 40 pages in, and they were talking a little bit now, I only read a little bit, so don't, I would like to hear from anybody else more, but it seems like he was implying that perhaps the Hebrew people originally weren't even from an planet, like they had come from somewhere else, knowledge. Does anybody else know something about that? I have heard that. I know the Native Americans. I know you got my report. Well, Michael was going to say something. So, absolutely. I like listening to what he has to say. Yeah. Are you still eating, Mike? Michael? <laughs> uh, guys, if I happen to uh, be busy, I'm actually working on my homework. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to suggest something. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry, Deanna, I can't hear you. I said I was gonna suggest something. Okay. But, like I like I want Andy's opinion on it because mm -hmm. like the same way how like you said that we didn't come from Earth that certain people were sent here. Mm -hmm. I have a theory that there were like a certain amount of people who are just sent here to make a difference. And yeah, I've been hearing knowledge that. knowledge and enlightenment. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing that from a few different people that I watch on YouTube. Like, um, we, some of us came from other places. And I'm not saying, I, I don't know what it means. I don't know what any of it means. I'm still trying to figure everything out, but it's interesting to think about that. It basically means... Yes, ma'am. It basically means that each person comes from a different stage of enlightenment and from, like, a different time era. Kind of like how me and Andy go way back. Yeah. Way back. That is so beautiful, the fact that you can both remember that. I am just now learning about my past lives. With Andy's help, actually, and it's wonderful. <laughs> to be honest, my past lives just come to me. All I have to do is to go to sleep, and I remember everything. I'm starting to remember them more, and I've noticed I've had a lot of memories in the past that I, I didn't know what they meant, so I just kind of brushed them aside. But now they're making sense to me and coming together to form a picture that now... I actually like met one of them. The one that Andy was spot on with, a girl in the jungle. And she just kind of came into my body and helped me realize that I don't need to fear. I've always had so much fear in this life and it came from a lot of different trauma, but she's working with me now and I can like feel her come into me and teach me things. <laughs> It's wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Never close your eyes to something so apparent. I'm sorry, what was that? Never close your eyes to something that's so apparent. Yeah. I'm, you may not like what you see at first, but yeah. once you learn what you're looking at, you know what you're looking at. Yeah. Is there... um? Something that connects with Kabbalah to learning about past lives? That would be interesting. It, like, is there a way to, I don't know, do meditations on it? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yes, actually, there is. Like, I was born with this talent where I'm able to connect directly to the higher power, and my name means the divine, and my last name means love man. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> so... 
to me, it comes like second nature. Mm-hmm. But I would say to discover your past life, I would say first center yourself and yeah. get into like that clairvoyant state of mind. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing so, just make sure you like focus on your goal and ask your angels, like, help me remember my past life. Mm-hmm. And when I asked my angels that, it hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> I've been it gave me that. literally a headache. Yeah. It was like a brick being thrown directly at my third eye, and that's how hard it hit. <sighs> Literally. I've been feeling a lot of pain in my chakras as well as I've been growing and changing. Like I feel I my crown chakra has been tingling like crazy all up and down, and like my third that's eye. So and I've been feeling a lot of pain in my heart chakra the past few days because it was closed for so long. You know, it was not me, but I had a lot of trauma and pain, and I didn't love myself. And now that I'm learning to, I can, like, feel it starting to, like, crinkly open, you know? <laughs> and today it opened so much, and I felt this endless love, and <sighs> I'm glad to be here with you guys. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so I can tell you that will happen, you know, if you close your chakras for so long. Yeah. That is bound to happen because that's happened to me before. Yeah. And I used to close myself out to the world. Like, even though I had, like, a direct open window and open doors, I was like, nope, I want these to be open and closed. Yeah. And I used to shut the world out like that. But over time, over time, the older I got, the harder it was to keep them closed. And then they so, slowly started to open. I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want this open. I don't want it to happen. <laughs> and then, like, before you know, I couldn't control it. I was like, oh, well, guess it's meant to be open. Mm-hmm. It feels so much better now, but it's still, yeah. like... It's basically, it's basically your instincts and your chakras saying, oh, I'm so old and I have been locked up for so long, and now I finally get to be out. Yeah. I saw we have a new person join the group. Wildfire Street? Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> um, and I also, I was wondering... Tony, if you knew about the chakras and how that connects to the Kabbalah, that would be cool to talk about too, since we're all feeling this. Uh, oh, Ariana, did you realize that when when uh, my girlfriend brought up the past life stuff, like she literally also helped me remember my past life. Is that when I was a young child, I also had dreams where I had her as my little daughter. I was her father in a past life in a Roman Empire. That, that's amazing how they're just it's starting to flood. We're all being flooded with this knowledge. It's just pouring into us now. And I, I love it. I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah. looking up the information you asked about. Give me just a second. Thank you, Tony. That's awesome. I, I would look it up, but I'm... I'm really bad at multitasking, and I, I want to focus on this conversation. <laughs> oh, I've, I've got it on uh, on a document format. We used it on uh, uh, Merlin's Mystery School. And I'm oh, we it. Yeah, I've already got it. I'm just I've already got it set up on a document. I just read it to you. I got it summarized and everything. So. But yeah, there's uh, there's five in the pillar. Uh, experience of consciousness and there's seven chakras so there's a couple of them that that have actually uh, they're not the same but uh, let's see the uh, the crown chakra of course that's the top of the head it corresponds to Keter mm-hmm. uh, the third eye chakra uh, it's the heart it's Dalit or Gimel mm-hmm uh, let's see, the throat chakra is Dayat. Thank you. 
you the, could you the, talk uh, a little bit about what those words mean? I know we went over it a little bit, but I, I still don't know very much about what each of those represent. Oh, all right. Wow, what was it doing? Oh, I think the radio show just went off. I was listening to it. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what just happened? Oh, I, I'm sorry to distract you from that. Thank you. Oh, no, 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 that's fine. I was listening to both of them. I was listening. He's, he's, funny. he's recording it, so uh, I can listen to it later. But, uh, okay. So when you uh, when Tony was talking about like some of those... Okay, I'm done. <laughs> it's not... What it's basically is that you're... It's like your evolution of your consciousness from just basically survival to actually playing... I am who I am, and I'm thriving now, no matter what happens to me. Yes. It's like the Maslow's hierarchy of me in oh. Native study psychology. At first, you need a physiological need, which is at the bottom of the Kabbalah. And then from there, you learn how to associate yourself with others, which is uh, the second or third part of uh, realization. And then it goes up and up and you know what I'm talking about. That's what makes it going on with us past that now we're where we're self realizing. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> I'm sorry, did you wanna um continue, Tony? Oh, yeah. I was just looking at it at the, uh, while Andy was talking, so it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> uh, he was actually like filling in airtime for me, and I appreciate that, Andy, because I'm still looking for stuff at the moment. Oh, it's okay. But, uh, yeah, uh, the top of the head, the crown chakra, that's uh, Kether. Uh, Kether on the tree of life, that's the, your first swirlings. Uh, the third eye, it's... Uh, I, I can't really say it has a uh, separatic correspondence. Uh, the way we did it in this mystery school is we uh, associated it to Ajna. It's, uh, it's also associated to the Hebrew letter uh, Dalit or Gemal. And uh, Dalit, is, I know, is door. So that totally makes sense as far yeah. as the Hebrew we're talking about. A door, like I said in the chat earlier, uh, whenever Hebrews are talking about, uh, or Jews, whatever, uh, when they're talking about like certain objects, they're talking about the entire essence of that object. Like a uh, house is, uh, is not just a house, like bet is a house, it's also anything that contains. And so in that, in that sense, that's what they're talking about, is the essence of that word. Now, right. uh, now the throat chakra, that is Deat. That is the hidden chakra, uh, or the hidden uh, sephirot on the tree of life. It represents knowledge, and that is when it, that is basically Deat is a reflection of Keter uh, in massive, infinite manifestation or uh, representation. So Keter is the first swirlings of that. This of is that the Doth right here. So, <laughs> Michael, dude, what the heck? So, so anyway, Dayat is that. It's that. Uh, it's a reflection uh, on a like ref the one reflecting as many, and every possible thing that you could ever imagine exists in Dayat. You know, so if you're talking about like look like I was explaining to Michael the other day, uh, a black unicorn with like a flaming mane. And a banana for a horn with a long snake tail, and you would think it might be evil, but you walk up to it and it licks you on the face. <laughs> and then, like another example of the same thing would be like uh, uh, the same thing. Uh, another unicorn, this beautiful white flowing mane, silver, pretty, you know, glittery uh, hoofs, and a horn that's like stained in blood because you don't necessarily want to get close to it, <laughs> you know. So it, it really is just so many different manifestations of what uh, existence can be, and it's just that exactly. It's the infinite manifestations of anything you can imagine is in Deat, and you can do a lot of Deat. Now, uh, stepping on down further as far as the chakras are concerned, uh, in the, the chest or the heart chakra, that's Tiferet. That's uh, that's your basically your center Sephiroth on the tree of life, and that represents the beauty. And beauty is in balance. There is in a balance. 
you know, you balance the the okay. hold on just a second, Andy. You mm -hmm. balance the severe with the cruel, uh, the logic with the emotion, or the logic with the intuitive. And whenever you can, can you uh, you reach that balance, and you're able to do that, then you you reach that that moment of beauty where you're standing balanced within yourself and in the universe and, and, and of course, the tree within you. Uh, that that man was pretty beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you. And now, uh, on further down, uh, there's another one that really doesn't have a, a Hebrew correspondence that I could think of, and that's uh, what we refer to as Manipura. It's mm -hmm. the, the gut chakra, the navel chakra. Uh, it's got a, the Hebrew letters He and Samech, but it doesn't really have a uh, because like there is only five sephirot on the middle pillar, so you can just fill those in. Now I'll go ahead and finish up the last two, and then Andy, you can talk all you want. <laughs> the groin chakra, uh, that's in Yasod. Yasod is foundation. That's the foundation of uh, how things. Um, are beginning to manifest into the material. That's your dream world. That's the astral. What the Aborigines call the dream time. So uh, that's what that exists. That's what yeah. that represents. And then, of course, the the, the root chakra uh, the, at the base of the spine. That's Malkut. That that's uh, the kingdom. That's that bottom. That's the bottom chakra or bottom stair on the tree of life. And that's like representing the walking kingdom of uh, manifestation. It's like the, the universe, the human world. So, Thank you, Tony. I really like that's that. That's about my hat on it. But yes, there's probably more information on those other two sephora, or those other two uh, chakras, but I haven't been able to find anything on it. Excellent, Antonio. Ajo. <laughs> Well, um, I was going to ask Mike really before good. we get Andy going, uh, did you watch the radio show? And if you did, what was something that really resonated with you about the Kabbalah? I don't know if you have already studied it. Which Michael? Oh, Michael, the one who was eating. I don't know your last name. I forgot. Oh, okay. Because okay, cause there's also the other Michael Lloyd oh, in here. There's, there's a lot of Michaels. So. Oh, how many Michaels do we have? I, I can only tell when it's the name, like Andy's got Ocean, we've got Skull, and Tony, and Wildfire, and Woody. <laughs> I guess I'm the only Michael here tonight. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, um, you repeat your question again? I, I, I heard I heard most of it, but I just want to... Yeah, we were all just going around and talking about something that really resonated or rang true for us while we were listening to the radio show about the Kabbalah. Oh yeah, definitely like a lot of um what Noah said. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> because I I know where Noah's Noah's coming from and mm -hmm. Noah to me is really uh I, I he's he's definitely very open-minded, but I say he's definitely on de definitely on on uh I'd say more of a more of a light a light path or a lighter path, um, especially. Wait, did you hear me? Yeah, I was agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, and some people. I don't know. I think it, I think it's up to everybody. Some some people like uh, the guy was saying Column. I think is yeah. That's his name. He he was saying like. You know, he had through all this and all this only to get to this realization, which I just think he goes to some some people have a more Batman story and, and some people have a you know a, a unicorn story. So I think it's um it's just really up to the individual and what they. But I I really resonated with what Noah said, um, and I was the one that asked the question because I. Not many um, Kabbalists that I know have have touched on it. We haven't even touched on it on class, which is the uh, the clip off. Uh, yeah, I don't know and anything about that. Could you talk see, about that? 
Yeah, See, you was... haven't heard anything about it because it's not spoken about much. <laughs> traditional Kabbalist. Um, he, they they touched on it mm -hmm. uh, briefly, yeah. and so I really um, resonated with it. It's um, it's not evil. It's just it's like a darker side, mm -hmm. a darker tree, if you want to look at it like that. But the thing about it, though, is with the Kabbalah, is that the darkness is usually um, misrepresented, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at it, the higher and higher you go up, it's all light once you get to Kether. But the thing about it, the thing that they look about it kind of in Kabbalah is that the darkness looks like the darkness because it's kind of like the whole kind of thing is like the Lucifer was once the most beautiful angel. Yeah. It's the same kind of concept. It's just like when you really it looks it looks scary on the surface, but when you really go into it and dig and find the treasure, it's really just this beautiful sparkling light, if you want to say. So that's that's. That's really my only um, thing. I I don't I'm, I'm not a person that's just like oh you know the dark side and I'm so dark and ooh I'm spooky you know I'm I'm not someone like that um, and I'm not a rebellious Christian either. If I was one. <laughs> so um, that's so what I call. I, well, because I'm saying I can sense I I know when a person's trying to because. Not that I, I was ever like that, but I'm like, when you study this information, people just start thinking, like, oh, my God, they're, they're so terrifying. They wrote a book on uh, <laughs> Satan, you know, they're so ter right. you know. It's usually just one book or so, you know, but uh, it's just like um, there's a be when you When you realize that a lot of these concepts – and sorry, I, I was I was trying to make this as brief as I could, but I just Don't got on roll. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, like a lot of these, uh, what people call demons and certain things like that. Now there oh. are lower vibratory beings, if you want to say earthbound spirits, but a lot of these, it's just kind of like say you're the creator. And you give these guys a story, and you just make them this way. You give them bat wings, and you make them ugly, and all this. That's the way they're being portrayed in the story. So a lot of these were not originally that way. They were beautiful beings, but because things got perverted, from uh, I believe Constantine, Roman. Empire and such perverted these beings, and so who's making the little moan sounds? My girlfriend. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Um, what anyways, you're what you're talking the Roman, about? the Roman, um, just just a lot of people that were in power mm -hmm. per perverted and and demonized these beings that were once. Uh, like beautiful, intelligent beings, um, yeah. and so that's really that's really what happens. So when you when you get into certain forms of Kabbalah and the Doth and certain things, what you're doing is actually just basically finding the beauty, the 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 true beauty in the darkness that was once uh, light. Really You're looking for the light and the dark. Yeah, I've been I've been studying shadow work. I don't know if you guys know much about that, but it's yes, I do. No, I don't worry. Yeah, I love the going because the darkness. It's part of our reality. It's not something to be shunned, you know, dismissed. It's something we can learn about in order to learn about ourselves. We have to go into that darkness and understand it so that we can integrate it and control it because if we don't it comes out in all these negative ways you know 
Well, it manifests. If, mm -hmm. if we don't actively uh, go after it to find it and uh, learn to accept it, there's lessons that will manifest when we're not necessarily ready for them to. So what we do is when we know that we're ready to, to deal with them, that when we can do shadow work, mm -hmm. we can bring it to the surface at a time we're ready to deal with it instead of mm -hmm. like, right, and then there's a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. What I, I, don't know, I don't know, if you, Michael. I don't know if you was listening earlier or not on YouTube, but I found out that that uh, Claudia Kabbalah it isn't that old, to be totally honest. It was like a little bit after 1492. So, and it's called the Lurianic Kabbalah, and Isaac Luria is the one that authored the entire thing. Wait, 82? Uh, uh, okay. and, and no, it's uh, 1942. Uh, or not, uh, 14, okay. 1492. But yes, if you oh. know, those numbers are very similar, okay. so it was easy for me to get them mixed up. But yeah, it's uh, 1492, like, it had nothing to do with Columbus, or it might have, I don't know. But at any rate, uh, they were uh, they were uh, exiled from Spain. So it was at another time that the Jews were kicked out, you know, and they were trying, and I believe that the, the Lurianic Kabbalah was written in the 1500s sometime by Isaac Luria, and he was basically just trying to explain how a benevolent God could let this happen, and how, you know, how, how come bad things happen to people. So it really was just one person's work on trying to explain why bad things happen to good people. Okay. <laughs> Guys, when it comes to the Kabbalah, Andy, can you take care of your girlfriend? Okay, I know. I... <laughs> Just ignore her. But here's the thing. Did who in here practice Kundalini yoga or any of the Tibetan yoga that I personally did or ever know about it? I'm interested in it, definitely. I haven't started on it. Okay. I don't do it personally, but honestly, when Andy does it, it's a motherfucker. Because honestly, it's so, it knocks you out, quite literally. So, unless you like to be paralyzed and unconscious, it's a great practice. Uh, speaking of knocking you out, uh, Teal is going to be doing a meditation on the 21st of, of this month. It's a free one, too. I'm sure you can find it on Teal Tribe. If the other one find it, I'll find it. Or any form of 
physical practices like yoga or hatha yoga or uh, Tibetan yoga. It doesn't matter. It's from yeah. the same sip The same That's pretty good, yeah. Oh, uh, this is like the. Uh, uh, is that skull? Where is the 80s? Oh, I see you, Andy. The idea I would Christian or anyone here about your experience and me doing like the yoga poses here? I can, all I can say is it knocks you out and honestly it's exhausting and it left me paralyzed for about an hour. I can't move my hands or legs or anything. The only thing I could move was my fingertips and my head. That's it. <laughs> That's how strong it is. That's me. Tony, That's you know you were right. Yoga. About what? You were right about um, Aleister Crowley eating a girl's feces. Oh, yeah. I don't know why, though. Well, Ariana, that's what basically what I did to my girlfriend when I was doing Kundalini yoga or any yoga three, three times. No, I literally <laughs> ate my girlfriend. <laughs> like you. What you're talking about, uh, I actually, I, wa I read that, that there was a post that you put up about the scientist view on that, and it said that... I just wanted to hear a non-biased scientific perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's what I wanted to read, too, and that's why I did. There was like several scientists. They, they each said that there really is nothing doing with it as far as doing it yourself from your own if you're healthy. Because then you can get nutrients in it, but it's a lot easier and it tastes a lot better to get it from like foods that have those nutrients already. <laughs> that's what they said. So, yeah, that's yeah, what they that's said. What they said. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying people say all these animals are cute and everything, but I'm saying this is known in the animal kingdom and in the insect kingdom. Oh, yeah. Well, they if they're do eat their own shit. Food. If they're foraging for food and they can't find it, you know, they're, they, don't right. have all, they don't have an alternative. And that's what another one of the scientists was talking about. Is uh, you know, if they still need nutrients, that's what they'll do, and they don't think they're not above it. I would I would say that'd really be some clip off shit. <laughs> well, it's not though. It really isn't because there's still nutrients in it, even though it smells and probably tastes bad. I've never tasted it, so I could tell you I <laughs> it might taste like either. chocolate. <laughs> That's probably well, not. <laughs> I'm saying, see, see, with with urine is easy for me, but I'm saying for that, that that is a, a little bit extreme. Oh, here's for me, the thing. For me, saying my own own perspective. <laughs> wildfire, wildfire street. Uh, oh, I'm gonna call, what comment? What uh, wildfire street said over in the, the chat box is human life is a privilege and we can choose not to eat our own shit. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. <laughs> but it is a choice. It absolutely is. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was definitely no nutritional value in uh, two girls, one cup. Oh, gosh. I actually got in trouble in school for just saying the words. There's no swear word. It was just too much for the teacher to... <laughs> right. To put it in the dock or something. Guys, if you, really, if you really like, uh, try to do uh, like some of the stuff that I'm doing. Like, for example, if you really like to starve yourself uh, without having to, like, for example, me, I only ate once every day. So, uh, I actually sun gaze a lot. I just eat the sun for uh, like at least 43 minutes a day, and then after that, I just I practice yoga. And that's how I survive. I literally don't have to eat anything anymore. Release the power of the sun. That is a good point, but uh, I think also something that we should remind people as far as if you do want to uh, absorb the energy of the sun, do it like yeah. at sunrise and sunset because that's when the rays of the sun aren't really as harmful because the atmosphere is filtering out the majority of harmful light. Oh yeah, and like, 
Fuck my girlfriend. Yeah, Don't no do one. it at noon. <laughs> this, oh, yeah. I was like, Daisy, I told me, she's like, Daddy, what have you been doing? I'm like, I'm bullshitting all the time. you guys are doing it. I know, I feel bad for interrupting you. Sorry, just talk about it. There's something else that occurred to me actually just now, and it's uh, not only the, the sun from the sunset and the sunrise, but also, I don't know if any of y'all have read the Celestine Prophecy or not, but whenever you just recognize the beauty of a scene, uh, whether it be in your uh, backyard or a flower garden or just out on a nature walk, whenever you just stop and recognize and just the beauty of that scene and it gets a little brighter, and you become more in tune with that whole just being, just that state of now, uh, that energy feeds you. You know, you actually draw from that energy. It's given to you freely by universe. So, it, yes, it, it is the sun. It's the sunrise and the sunset. But what it's that? also... I don't know. Just my girlfriend. It's okay. Is that a creep? <laughs> you know, I've actually... I've noticed... I'm anemic, and I normally, I used to only, I would pass out, I literally faint if I didn't eat enough, but I've noticed since I've been on this path for the past month, I'm needing less and less food, yes. and that, that is so oh, wow. relevant now. It's like I'm getting nourished by the universe. I've been feeling that for a couple weeks now. I have to ask you, Ariana, have you ever had, like, have you ever had, like, experience where, I don't know that, you, you're not going to faint, but it's just almost just like... Oh, so this is... It's, it's almost like the your room or your surroundings or what you see, it like starts like blackening out. You feel like this hotness on like your head. Have you ever felt that before? That, I've been feeling a lot of things like that. And in fact, I, I actually talked about it in a YouTube video. I... I discovered, or I finally admitted to myself, that I am an empath. After all of these experiences that I've had, I can't deny it anymore. And um, I, I black out sometimes from intense emotion. No drugs, no alcohol. I will literally black out from the intensity of the emotions that I'm feeling. And it is very intense. And sometimes I do have to do some things of like heat or tingling that I can't explain, and yeah, I've been feeling a lot of stuff like that. <laughs> uh, no, that I mean, that makes sense. I mean, I mean, it it is, I don't want to say it's, it's cool to be an empath, but I'm saying it's a gift and a, I wouldn't say it's a curse, but I'm just saying there are two sides that come yeah. with it. I struggled yes. with it my whole life, and I had I had depression and anxiety my whole life, and I'm realizing now that it, it wasn't all just inside of me. I was picking up on the negativity you of those up, around yeah. me. And Is, now, uh, like, like being in like like large groups of people, like, how does that make you feel? Sometimes it's exciting, like going to like San Francisco, I feel this upbeat vibe, but like when I go to work, I'm a bartender and it's a very negative environment, hostile, and for, I was so depressed, I, it was terrible. Every time I went to work on a Friday or Saturday night, I just loathed it and I was speaking with this negative energy, but now I'm learning to well, that's, yeah. every hour to save all my chakras. I go outside and I stage around my body and I just release all the negativity and now I can go to work and remain happy in my body without without getting <gasps> into it, you know, without feeling everybody's negativity around me. So I'm kind of using it now. Sense, yeah. Now I'm using it like a Yeah, pet. I'm very similar. I very actually similar. Uh, come up with the, uh, some affirmations the other day. I guess you could say they were channeled through spirit. I'm going to go ahead and put them over in the chat box, uh -huh. uh, and y'all can use them whenever. Thank you. <laughs> now, Ariana, just, uh -huh. it's okay. Don't worry. I'm 
actually an empath too. My girlfriend is also one, and I also happen to be an indigo and crystal child. So therefore, like, it's ridiculous for me to go through work and everything. So half the time, like, it, like I had to change jobs. You know, I like, get fired some crap coming out of that corporate world. So it's normal. Eventually, when you have an awakening symptom, you're going to experience a lot of that. I'm not going to ever experience this, but you're going to experience it too if you ever like awaken or raise yourself up. You're going to experience it. And my girlfriend is also experiencing this very part right now. So, like, in case you guys didn't know, you're not going to be able to do it. It's like, we're all here to support one another. So that's the great thing. Thank you, Andy. I'm having a trouble hearing you again. Yeah, it's kind of low. It's it's low. I, I can it's barely hear. I had, whisper. I had to whisper, guys. I don't want my mom to kill You're me, you know. mellow today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah, that's an that a, a, a patient over there in the in the oh, side no. chat. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would, I'd, I'd write it down. Tony, my girlfriend needs help. What is that squeaky noise? It doesn't guys, sound right. She's she's an emergency. A dark figure is in her room. Sounds like a poacher, guys. Or a demon. Darth Vader's in her room? Yes. Now this is starting to sound like Inuyasha. Oh my presence, I need help. What what do you need help with? Getting rid of the dark figure or scary. Figure. I had I had an experience like that at my friend's house a couple nights ago. Somebody had committed suicide in her house years ago, and I I was over there hanging out, and I immediately she could tell that I was not feeling good the whole time I was there, and then we started talking, and things started coming out, and I was guided to help heal some of the pain that she was feeling that was coming all around her, and um, I'm actually. I was actually going to say bye because I'm going over there early in the morning to help her. I'm going to clean, I'm going to clean up the whole house, take everything out and clean the whole thing, and sage it, sage and get the it. energy out because it's. You could tell they kind of hoarded everything, and there's just all this negative energy stuck in the place. So if there's like that kind of yeah, negative, if it feels really heavy, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's yeah. It's usually a sign. Yeah. I actually, um, I actually injured myself. We went outside to the garage. I didn't even see in the garage. All I saw was like a blanket, and I immediately flipped out and ran back in. And I hit the door, and I got a bruise on the opposite side, and I was bleeding, just panicking because I felt this negative energy of just keeping everything, hoarding everything because you don't feel safe, you know, unhappiness wow. and despair. And it freaked me out. And if Deanna, if if you're feeling that kind of negative energy, like you have like sage or something or crystals, I would try to just focus on positive energy and surrounding yourself with this positive love energy. Oh, okay. Okay. Deanna, can you feel me now? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, Deanna, I didn't feel know me? what was going on. Over. Right now. Right beside you, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. Here, okay. I'll, I'll light a candle for you. <laughs> okay. Sweetheart, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry. Okay. Can you feel me? No, this is really starting to sound like Yasha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to know what it was or like. This is totally what happens in New Yasha. Thank you. Except Inuyasha's a demon. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. Kristen, you're so mellow today. Yeah, I'm tired. Um, I kind of my energy's kind of worn out from yesterday from giving free hugs and being in the sun. So today I was just really, really tired. So. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Sorry. <laughs> No, I wish I was. Kristen, 
Free, free hugs can, yeah. Did you know that when I was out in the sun, like when I, in my yoga practice and sun gazing, I literally felt like I just want to sleep for two hours before I get up. That's normal. And in fact, my girlfriend got hit, so I'm not scared of that. It's, it's, it's definitely making an impact on the world. It's okay, Deanna. I'm right here. I'm right beside you. Each act of kindness and certain things like that, they send, yeah. like, you know, it's like throwing pebbles into, you know, a yeah. pond. It sends yeah. Can, I, can you, yeah, can you, can I feel me pinching you? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I have an idea. Um, Deanna and Andy, do you want to start a Google chat with the three of us? And I want to help get rid of that energy over there, and then you guys can keep talking about Kabbalah and stuff. Yes, that would be lovely. Okay, I don't know how to start a group chat. Do you guys know how to do that? Uh, yeah. Andy does. Andy, do you want to start one? And then I'll, I'll invite me, and I'll, I'll join it, and then you guys can keep talking about the Kabbalah and keep going. I, I want to make sure. Oh, I want to go. If, if you guys want to help that, I don't, I, we're kind of going off topic here. Maybe we could... It's okay. Yeah, yeah we, we are. Yeah, we are live, so... <laughs> <laughs> the school's be a... going to be like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, he understands, but, you know, it's... it's, it's uh, but, yeah, I believe... It's, I, suggest, I think the suggestion for opening a different hangout would be more uh, beneficial for all involved. All right. True, true. Well, I'm going to go... And help them. And I love you guys. Oh, much love. Bye, Ariana. Much love. Yes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I don't even know how to get out of here. <laughs> Bye. Peace. Wow. I mean, okay, well, it looks like I mean, we could help. Us in here. <laughs> Well, we can yeah. help, but we don't necessarily, you know, we could do that from where we're sitting, to be totally honest. Yeah, pretty uh, much. I've already I mean, if, if you out. call upon, I mean, if you, I mean, if you, if you call upon the angels, I mean, it's done, like, very quickly, you know. I mean, it's just more so the fact is just, if you, if you don't see things, like, you know, clairvoyantly it's just sometimes you think things are still there that you know they've already been taken care of but not in in this situation you know it sounds like there's there could be something there or you know or she watches a lot of Hollywood movies or or there could be something there <laughs> <laughs> right. but sometimes well, yeah, just watching Hollywood movies you let things in absolutely yeah yeah, there's a somebody I don't want to mention any names, but there's somebody that I deal with on Facebook that has that deals with demons all the time, and one of the reasons that it happens is because they uh, constantly are watching those animes that has to do with the darker aspects, uh, you know. Yeah. And you know, if that's the case, you know, you're going to bring that into your existence. So you, if you at all possible, there are cool animes out there. I love anime. Uh, I'll be Same the first here. one to, to say it. You know, I love some animes, but some of them are just really dark. <laughs> you know, and probably oh, yeah. shouldn't be watched like right before you go to bed, or if you're a sensitive individual. <laughs> Woody. <laughs> I'm Woody. Well, Woody. Woody probably doesn't watch it. Anyway, no, Woody, he, he, uh, he Woody watches, can handle it. He Woody can handle it. Yeah, he can. If he can watch that one video, yeah, he can happily handle it. I was watching this interesting thing on like MK Ultra, and it was just—it's just crazy how they talk about like the hippie movement and all of these things. I'm like, then what? Do, what? What do we have? What does? Okay, let's say, you know, what I mean, there's the Native Americans and such, but I'm saying what. What do we have that's authentic? That's not government, military intelligence, you know, created. You know, I mean, I'm I'm not saying the because I love the hippie movement, 
but just what I was reading is just that a lot like a lot a lot of um, musicians and people that were in the that started the hippie movement were like somehow part of a, like military intelligence MK Ultra kind of deal. Huh. Have you heard that I before, when, Tony? I know when uh, Woody was talking about the hippie movement, I didn't really know all that much about it compared to what he, because he was like there, you know, so, and what he mentioned about it was that a lot of them were, you know, they got paranoid, they was worried about who's a narc and stuff yes. like that, and or, or there was people that was, you know, they might have been set, put in there as catalysts to invoke that energy. Just we invoked Woody. <laughs> no, he was already here. He no, was I'm just kidding. listening in. The raven on the perch. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think, well, Woody, do you think um, you could, I mean, it's just things I've read. I, wa I watched a documentary, but uh, it was just saying certain things, like Jim Morrison's father was a admiral for the Navy, and they say that's actually how... The Vietnam, he did something, I forgot, but it's actually kind of led up to the Vietnam War. And then there was Frank Zappa, who, I guess people in his family or something were connected to certain, uh, I don't know necessarily who. I read it, but just all these people had these connections to either Masonic or uh, like MK Ultra um, type thing. Have you heard about that, Woody? I, no, I had not heard that about Frank Sam, but he was, he was kind of weird, kind of neat. Uh, but I do think that like Either the military or the or the CIA or both were experimenting with uh, LSD uh, in behavior modification programs. You know, long before it hit the streets. Uh, and as far as the hippie movement, I think it was a it was sort of an offshoot of the earlier beatnik movement, which was they were mostly into poetry and uh, I guess you know. Peace, and poetry, and uh, and music, and then when it became the, the hippies, it became a little more drugs kind of took over, and then the after that the paranoia with the you know the with all. so, uh, but the beatniks, I think I was very young when I I think I was about eleven or twelve when that movement was going on. That would have been about nineteen. 55 to 58 or something when they were called beatniks. I don't recall hearing the term hippies until about 1964. So, oh wow, that's, uh, that's pretty much what I remember about it. That's I was, you know, four years in to the 60s. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they did. I, I never did pinpoint the act, you know, the actual time of the hippies. I knew it was like, it actually was uh, pretty paramount in what the late '60s, wasn't it? About well, mid to late '60s. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe 1967. I think out on yeah. the California coast, it was a little earlier, and then it spread more inward. Uh, oh yeah, what I remember. But yeah. The uh, probably about 1967 was, uh, I guess, when I started hearing more and more about the hippies. Uh, before that, though, I remember it was generally they were called beatniks. Beatniks. Yeah. Supposedly, that was uh, a reference to the Beatitudes. Is where the the name came from. Oh wow! I didn't know that. That's really cool. So they be uh, beatitude nicks. That's that's neat. Of course, the the what yeah. the beatitude of Junitudes. Well, I don't know exactly how you pronounce it. <coughs> Excuse me. Those were uh, 
circles are basically what uh, Issa talked about on the uh, mount, on when they did what they called quote unquote the Sermon on the Mount, where he was basically just yeah. teaching, uh, you know, the right way to live. So I was, he said, "I am the way, and this is how it is. <laughs> right here, <laughs> do this." And I, I, I totally get that. I I totally resonate with the Beatitudes and what they state and. Uh, how much better the world would be if uh, there was also did. the Maharishi. That that was uh, later, I think. Of course, also the Maharishi, the, the Beatles. They, they got involved. Yeah, the Beatles got involved with uh, the Maharishi and uh, Tibetan and uh, stuff like that, as far as uh, the meditation, and the mantras. Yep. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of uh, of the quote unquote hippies that got into like doing drum circles, uh, Native American uh, style uh, shamanism like Morrison. Mm -hmm. the, and you know that and of course I'm sure some of the more intellectual ones, they more than likely uh, got into Kabbalah. I know Morrison knew a little bit about Kabbalah. So I don't know how much he knew. Oh really? Yeah. I, I only only one I know is um, Madonna, unfortunately. Oh gosh, no, no, the Kabbalah is way older than that. Yeah, if uh, if Jim Jim Morrison being a college student in the '60s, I'm sure he definitely heard of. I don't know, Madonna's not that bad. <laughs> no, she's not. She's not that good either. She just is what she is, you know. <laughs> She she knows what she she knew what she was doing all the time that she was doing it, you know. So uh, yeah, Did people she, can can hate she, her for it or love she her for one it. Of the ones she, that were, she got a bunch of free publicity, like breaking stereotypes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Would you? Or would yeah, you say that's more Miley Cyrus? Well, oh. Miley Cyrus is continuing the the whole that whole thing, uh, and of course, there's other. Uh, people as well that's doing that today. Uh, of course, like I said, uh, Billy Corrigan with Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, there's uh, that well, band called... Well, the way she cut her hair, it kind of looks like... Boyish? Yeah. It's kind of reminiscent, I guess, of old Madonna, or the old Madonna. Yeah, kind of. I can see that. Yeah. The others... Uh, but Madonna isn't the only one that uh, practices Kabbalah. Uh, it's not a. There's a, a, a Drew Barrymore. She's very much so into Kabbalah. Oh really? Oh yeah. Yeah, she's actually somebody who gained a lot from it. Uh, I remember one interview with her. She said I, she said she could feel the key dripping dripping off of her tongue. There's no telling how many drugs she was on at the time of the interview. The uh -huh, but yeah, and she's mentioned the Kabbalah before in uh, some of her interviews that she's had. But, uh, yeah, it's nothing new. Yeah, it's a lot of what a lot of people. Little Charlie's Angels. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well, yeah. That, I mean, that's definitely it makes sense. Well, I don't know. I mean, the people. I mean, you. You don't really know unless you know you ask them, or unless you know they're kind of obvious about oh, yeah. it. Right. Of course, the Freemasons. You know, they've been practicing Kabbalah for years, like decades. They've known about that, and it's not necessarily they keep it hidden. They just haven't necessarily talked about it. But that information has still always been out there. But whenever I first started, it wasn't on the internet. There was no internet, you know. So yes, there was a time. There was a time before the internet, you know. Whenever if a I time wanted before to, Wikipedia. Yeah, where I, if I wanted to, like I don't know, uh, play on my computer, I had to write a program to do it. <laughs> Bofferman didn't have a Wikipedia page. No. no, but yeah, you had you could go to like bookstores and uh, libraries. Uh, you might see like a little drawing of, or you know, you'd you'd you'd, you'd have to go to bookstores to 
kind of fine. Yeah, that. it was. Yeah, it was more like a drawing, like you said, but not necessarily a little drawing. It's like you know, you felt it. It's like uh, the first time that I found a book on yoga, believe it or not, was like out here in the country, in what they call country. Tri in Tri City at a grocery store on a book rack. You know, and I'm like, wait a second, why is this oh, here? Oh, Kristen, you teleported back. Hey, welcome back. Hey. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to send you a link unless somebody, because I have to copy and paste them on the iPhone, so. Oh, okay. That's, that's fine. Yeah, but the only thing I could, because I'm not using Google Chrome anymore, so I don't have the Hangouts on the bottom. Of course, they're not popping up every time somebody says something, too, so it's a good thing. And plus, I can like, also use uh, Facebook as well. You know, I've got Facebook up also. So. But yeah, I finally got Firefox working so I can use it instead of Internet Explorer. Because uh, apparently uh, Internet Explorer is obsolete for the uh, for Windows Vista, and you can't use Google Hangouts on it. So I'm glad I got Firefox working now. Yeah, I had to get with a Fox A. So that way I can, uh, can you know, if somebody does post their Facebook link or wants my Facebook link, I could actually share it. Because there's a couple of people that I missed uh, being able to connect with them because I didn't have my Facebook page able to, to be you could uh, be set like, up. Like, you could oh, be man. like, uh, of course, hi, I my name is Tony. I'm a professional ceremonial magician. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say professional. <laughs> uh, my profession includes uh, just like several things. It's not really a profession, as in like what I do for a living or anything. Tuology. What Tuology. I profess. What I profess to. <laughs> Working with tools. I wonder if there's any any uh, etymological etymological link between like professing professor and like professing you know if you profess like you're admitting to like Amen. I profess that I am a ceremonial magician so it's that your profession <laughs> that's, see you know? that's true <laughs> so there's got to be some etymological link there but I never really thought yeah, about when, that when, when a person says that they're a pro well, pro is different than there's no F on pro. So how could you say? Because people say they're pro and they're saying like they're for something. Yeah, they're they're for something. But that that I think that comes short with pro, that's like short for pro like fame. profession. And uh, I don't know what con is short for. Uh, consensus. I'm not positive though. But I you know or conjecture. Con Maybe. is usually like uh, the negative aspects of like it. Like condescending. Right. It's the, like pro, the pros and cons of something. You have the yep. the pros, meaning that you're poor. Continue. Uh, but cons is like, you know, you know it's like uh, you, you, you don't like the idea. I've never really looked into that. It's kind of interesting to Con consider. Consciousness. Constraint. Yeah, maybe, possibly. I don't know. <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got Brendan wondering as well. He's over in the chat box. Con. Who? Brendan. Skull. Oh. <laughs> I, oh never okay. really, I never really thought about that. But, yeah. I, I didn't either. Well, I'm saying because I, I knew his nickname was Skull, so I just always... What was Skull? Yeah, I, I just I just call him Brendan, but yeah, I call him Skull every now and then. Very seldom though. I don't know why. Can't he said you, 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 you can call you can call me Big Skull Babylon. <laughs> I'll call you the Grand Poobah Big Skull, the <laughs> Grand Kahuna Babylon. <laughs> big 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 Papa Babylon. I've got this long title that I come up with. It was like what the Grand Poobah, the Mystic Star. Master Eleven, his holy grand, uh, big, -headedness, big headedness, <laughs> long wittedness, the almighty Tony. <laughs> 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 
Oh, he's without the beard. <laughs> Beardless Tony. Beardless Tony, yeah. That was pretty funny. Oh, you remember that post that I gave? I sent you? Yeah, that was funny. It was, oh, yeah, there's... That title. <laughs> it's like, you know how mages have, like, those really long titles? It's like, here he is, the most professional, like, grand wizard, the grand poobah. <laughs> I mean, there's really it's some mighty cool and excellent. Why, Master when, I, when I was theory. thinking of the title, it, it took me a little while because I was just like, I wanted it to flow. And Andy was telling me things, and they sounded kind of cool, but it just didn't have a a flow. It's, it's got to ha have like that that like pinch or that like dab of just like oh yeah magical well, dust to it when you say it. It's just like so it's just like Merlin's Mystery School. Well also one thing you, know, you have to like, do whenever you come up with a, a, a title for a mage is you have to use a lot of adjectives. It starts with the same letter. They're like magnificent, the marvelous, the marvelous. Yeah, yeah, the miracle worker, Merlin, and his mystery school, his and excellency, his the most grand poopa. You know, <laughs> you have to use a whole lot of adjectives. <laughs> that's well, yeah, that that's true. I thought. Well, I'm saying because there's so, there's so many cool names like Abra Melon. Oh, I mean, yeah. when is the last time you heard someone called Abra Melon? <laughs> that's that's, a, that's an interesting name, though. I oh, mean, yeah. that sounds like like a kind of fruit, like yeah. Abra Melon. <laughs> I like to have some Abra Melons, right? You know, I I I don't have no idea. I mean, it probably it has something to do, I guess, with uh, Hebrew. Because, but uh, I mean, I mean, for some reason, it sounds so much cooler than Abraham. Yeah, well, uh, Abramelin Abram was. It's like uh, a mix between like Abraham and Merlin. Was allegedly his mentor. You know, he was allegedly uh, Abraham's mentor. I I don't know that for a fact. That's just he had a the knowledge that I've read. Well, I did yeah. get um. That's what it, it says in the. In. It finally came. <laughs> After Skull a long says wait. Merlin. <laughs> I like that one. He came after a long wait. Oh wow, cool. The Dead Sea Scrolls. Which I'm yeah. reading it now and I, I definitely see a difference as I'm saying right now, from what I've read, I mean it's uh, I mean more, more of the same. This is the same story. Right. I mean, there's that's, there's that's things that are different, but that's why I you like know, the apocrypha. Uh, apocrypha. Oh, there's a spider in here. Oh, it won't do anything to you. <laughs> as long as it's not shiny. As long as it's not shiny, you're fine. If it's shiny, <laughs> run. It's brown. Okay. And it's no. on my wall. <laughs> if it's not shiny, you're fine. It's just a wood spider or something. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. I just don't really like crawly things like spiders. <laughs> oh, I know. I don't. I don't like. Especially in bugs my bedroom. In my room. <laughs> I don't really mind spiders. They don't really bother me too much. It just depends how big they are. Well, the the last one that I had in my room, I would say it was probably uh three three inches by four inches, and it was a big old wood spider. And it was crawling on my leg, and I sw I like s knocked it off, not thinking mm -hmm. about it. And then I was like, "Oh gosh, dude, you yeah. better not do that. You're gonna wind up outside." <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like things crawling oh. on me, you know, at night or anything. <laughs> no, I don't. Need, well, the, a, a spider isn't as creepy as a roach, though. Oh gosh, no. Uh, I'd, I'd much rather have spider than roaches. At least they're respectful. Spiders are respectful. Roaches have no respect. Yeah. Spiders just kind of hang and do their thing. They're on their journey, you know. And, and, and I don't know. Are you are you are you familiar with the with the insect kingdom, Kristen? 
Um, not so much, but I was looking up a lot of like my animal totems and stuff. I think that well, I don't really know exactly, but I think it might be a koala because I've always resonated with a koala bear. Um, I had one as a child that was my favorite. It was so soft and cuddly. I would always sleep with it at night and surround myself with a whole bunch of uh, stuffed animals because I was scared of the dark. And so oh, okay, I was, stuffed like, animal. So they protect yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. I had an yeah, I, was, I didn't know I if you had an actual koala. I was like... No, no, no. I wish. <laughs> They're so cute. But I... I, I <laughs> but, yeah. So, I don't know. I haven't really found, I think, my... I don't know. I think that might be my animal totem, but I'm not quite sure. Makes sense. If you want to see a really... I'm saying, do you, like, do you like bugs? Check out uh, Google Slow Loras. Yeah, I, I do like bugs. I used to play with snails and roly polies and all of that when I was younger and stuff. So I didn't really care if they crawled on me. I, I really liked uh, ladybugs and dragonflies. Um, yeah, dragonflies. Yes, I love dragonflies and 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 uh, hummingbirds too. I love hummingbirds. Okay. So. What about that squirrels? Is a cool, that is a cool link that Skull put on the chat box. I'll have to... Squirrels? No, it's a koala bear hanging onto somebody's shoe. Or hanging Aww. onto their calf. And he's just walking around in the keyboard. Yeah. Just hanging there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would love to go... I would love a koala bear. Oh, and um, what are those animals called that... Uh, they're really soft and fuzzy, and they have fuzzy uh, tails. Yeah. What? Chinchilla? Yes, the chinchilla. I love those. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. <laughs> yeah, if you want to look at a, a really cute animal, check out a slow loris. Slow loris? Is, isn't Pikachu? Uh -huh. Wasn't Pikachu -O -R -I supposed to be a chinchilla? I don't know. I think I think maybe, but I'm not positive. <clears throat> I used to love Pikachu. He was my favorite. But yeah, yeah I looked up. I looked up. Uh, <laughs> Trying to figure out what yeah. some animal was that somebody had that they posted on my Facebook page, and I finally found it. It's a cousin of the Lemire, and it's called a Slow Loris. L O R I S. And they're just adorable. Okay, well, I'll check it out. Pika Pika! Choo! <laughs> <laughs> collect all the cards and stuff too and I didn't really know how to play the game that everyone played but I just like collecting oh, them yeah. but then, yeah, then later the on yeah and then later on I didn't really like have a, a meeting for them so I just kind of gave them away <laughs> I, I thought I gave mine away what? I'm glad I didn't yeah but, no, like, I mean, back in, like, um, second grade, like, they used to have these things where it was just, like, you'd battle, and, like, you'd go to a place like the bookstore, and they'd have these battles, and if you won, like, they'd have, like, the actual badges, and I swear, like, my friend, his name was Cody at the time, he just laid them all out on the desk, and I'm like... You lucky bastard. Yeah. I, I, I got my first badge, though. This, this dude had, like, he had all of them. I'll put a link over there in the chat box for one of those, uh, the slow loras. It's a lemur looking animal. They're just, oh, wow. They're just <laughs> so cute. I, I could see, I don't know, I'm on the iPhone. The last thing I, I could say is when Deanna said, okay, good night. I can send it to you on uh, Facebook for a second. But yeah, it's really, it's just a adorable animal. I'm watching it right now. Oh, okay. Aww. You mind? I know, isn't it? Is, is that a lemur? Or, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a cousin. cousin. It's a cousin to a lemur, yeah. How cute, I love the eyes. I know, it's just adorable. Let's <laughs> think about they're endangered, though. So you, oh, you gain okay. Aww. They're so cute face. and fuzzy. I just want to just pet it and hug it. 
His that's, that's eyes are just of, so like you. You gotta watch out for that. For that face, man. That's the type of face girls make when they want something. <laughs> what? <laughs> My face? I mean, what? That sad eyes. Please. <laughs> Guys make that face too, though. That's the kind of face people make when they want something. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it. <laughs> right. Please. Puppy dog guys is what, what Skull's saying over there. All right, Skull. I don't even know if I can he make it. He said he's one. going to he's gonna lie down and he'll, uh, he'll take, take the ending. live stream offline at one twenty a.m., which I don't know. What, what time zone is that? Is that east? Uh, or Pacific? Um, Whatever it is. Yeah, eastern. I, I think that's like Cali... <laughs> Where's Skull at? Okay, no, it is. It's Ottawa. Or, or like, yeah, it's over uh, West. on the east, eastern time. Uh, oh, east. Yeah, east. Okay, yeah, now that eastern makes sense. Eastern standard time. Yeah, because Mountain is like so a So in 10 hour. minutes. Okay, yeah. But you can go ahead and shut it, it down now if you want to. <laughs> show show it down. Oh, the live the live feed. Uh, we pretty oh, much okay. covered the whole uh, what we were just talking about as far as Kabbalah is concerned. But yeah, I definitely want to listen to that uh, extra long uh, radio show recording. Yeah. I was I was listening to it because I was like tuned in on was Skype. Go into the clip off. Eh, kind of, sorta, but not really. He definitely has an interesting view on things, and I had never heard it, so I want to listen to it. You know, like, uh, I swear, when I heard that, I mean, the dude sounded like I was listening to Joel. Or Joel. <laughs> Joel. Don't they sound really, uh, like similar? Very similar. You mean in, his, in the way that they talk and their voice? Wait, yes. Okay, yeah. It's like yeah, that. it was very similar. But the perceptions are totally different. Perceptions and I, are and I like, way different. Yeah. But yeah, I, I kind of was interested. I didn't necessarily agree with everything that he said, but I'm kind of interested in just getting somebody else's perception. You know, Did you I like his interpretation on the clip? To off. listen to a different point of view. Uh... Yeah, pretty much. He, he didn't get into detail about it because there's really not that much detail on it. The only uh, source that no you can really knew. find for the for the clay pop, yeah. But what also Noah was like, that's also just like what it is, <laughs> you know, because it is basically it's not what a lot of people sure. think, ex including me, including me. I thought it was like you know, the hidden part of the Kabbalah or something that was discovered, like, and it's not. Yeah, it, Isaac Luria completely, basically fabricated it through the idea of, uh, you know, just, like, working through how a negative Kabbalah would be, because he was a Kabbalist, so uh, he basically designed the Klipot, and or Klipot, or however you pronounce it, uh, to explain the persecution of the Jews and say, well, how, if God is such a loving God, how can he let this happen to us? You know, so he had to, he, he had to put it in a, a language he understood and he understood the Kabbalah. So he didn't see how it could happen in the Kabbalah. That's where the whole, the Shekinah come from and Simpson. That's from the Lurianic Kabbalah, not the traditional Kabbalah. So you think maybe it just has, it just has like a cool name? Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. Pretty <laughs> that, see, it does. It's got a pretty. It's, it's got a pretty cool name. I'm wondering, That's, say, say for for the for the poop eating, where on the tr <laughs> where on the tree sure, of life that would be would Dayot. Be? Wow. I would say that would I be don't on know Dayot why I was because anything. It was the because anything. Well, the clip art it really doesn't. I mean. The tree of life does not necessarily have to have, like, the tree of death, because the tree of life covers itself in its own self, by itself, through the four Kabbalistic worlds. Uh, Isaiah, Absolute, Berea, and, uh, or, yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah, Yetzirah, Absolute, uh, Berea, and Absolute. Anyway, 
is there's four of them, and there's the, the different format worlds of formation. And I I don't know if uh, Colin got into that in tonight or not. I, I was kind of like I only listened to like half the program, so because I went in there watching half of. Uh... Let me see. I can look that up real quick. It is important, and since we are well, still the, alive, the, path, the path of the mage, the, uh, the straight arrow, oh, and there was the path of the flaming sword. Path of the flaming sword. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Which is yeah, what they uh, don't do in Star Wars. Uh, actually, uh, Windu probably did, because uh, but no, they don't actually cover. Like it but a Anakin went the straight, the arrow, right? Uh, he tried to. <laughs> well, he went to the. No, I think, I think all the Jedi's really do. It just decide they just depend on where they want to go, you know, because there are like the Jedi guardians mm. really don't really focus that much on the Force. They just, that's the ones that have the blue lightsabers, and they're more uh, focused on how to use the weapon itself for defending people. So they're more well, like Anakin had a blue lightsaber, right? So he was learning to become so he a was Jedi basically. master. So he he was a guardian, wasn't he, of uh, uh, Padme? Wasn't he supposed to be guarding her? Yeah. But he did use yeah. the force. Well, yeah, but he was actually being trained at that time as a guardian, so he he stepped outside the box, basically. And, and of course, Qui Gon Kane kind of filled his head. And Qui Gon, you know, he was definitely uh, what the, what I would call a Jedi Sentinel. Uh, maybe even a little bit more on the oh, dark Qui -Gon side. Qui Gon returned in the either the fourth or the fifth one, I believe. Oh, really? Hey guys, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get ready for bed and stuff. So I'm. I'll talk to you guys a little later, okay? Oh, yeah, all right, Kristen. All right, you guys have a good night. You too. Peace and love. Peace and love. Love and light. Love Wait, and light. did she blow a kiss? Yes. Love oh. everyone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Journey well. Okay. To go ahead and I was like, did she blow a kiss? <laughs> yeah. To go ahead and finish this off before we wrap it up, I'll go ahead and say this about the four worlds of the Kabbalah. It's uh, the world of emanation. That's the world uh, uh, that's called the absolute. And uh, what it basically is, is uh, it's, the world expression is in this moment and its truth is timeless. Uh, it's element, it's fire. In the body, it's like the crown chakra. It's uh, just the emanation, the idea. Uh, Bria, or Bria, the world of creation. It's a world of science, field, matter, energy, uh, shaped with wisdom. The breath of Rish. the soul. Bria. Bria. Yeah, that's the world of creation. So, so far we've got the world of emanation, the world of creation, uh, contemplating, reasoning, stuff of that nature. Uh, it's in the element of air, you know, and that's what it is. It's, it's that coming up with the idea. We're emanating, you know, you get the idea, creation, you start working on the idea. Uh, yet, Sarah, the world of formation, that's whenever you start actually uh, organizing that idea. Uh, it's from the rope, the soul rope, water. Uh, in the, it's in the heart, the center, the lung, circulation, oxygen. Uh, the human expression is art, poetry, all love. Uh, it's, and then its uh, element is water. And then, of course, you go down into Isaiah. I see in the world of action, that's whenever, whatever you decide to come up with in thought to manifest in the physical, that's whenever you take it into action and you actually uh, work on that and move toward it, uh, get the, uh, the, you know, it's just like I was talking about as far as like if you need something 
first you can formulate an idea. I need to, uh, Donald Michael Craig used this as an example, and I really like it. When you formulate an idea, I need a place to put my book. Okay, that's that's the idea. That's the world of emanation. And then you, the world of creation is you think in your mind, well, what could I use to put my book on? A, a pedestal or, a, uh, you know, some sort of a table. Okay, and so then you start true, creating true. that idea and how that you can manifest that. So in the formation of it, you decide whether or not you want a table or what have you and the dimensions of it and all of that and what materials you're going to need to create it. And then in the world of action, you actually do it. You know, you, you take the wood, you start cutting it the lengths that you want, and you build it. And it starts off as an emanation and then finally comes into a, an act, a world of action where it exists in front of you to hold your book. And that's just one example. So, but yeah, I guess that's a good place to, as far as, uh, go as far as uh, ending it because but did you hear all that it uh, got me out for some reason I don't know. oh okay I, I heard I heard most of it okay well I'll just recap real quick since uh, Skull's going to go ahead and shut it down but uh, yeah basically uh you start off with an idea. That's the world of emanation. Uh, like you want to have something to hold your book on. The world of creation is you uh, decide what kind of thing you want to hold that book on, like whether it be a table or a pedestal or something like that. The world of formation, you actually start thinking about the dimensions and what it's going to look like. And then in the world of uh, creation, world of action, you actually uh, build it. <coughs> But yeah, you can look up the full Kabbalistic worlds. It's basically the whole idea behind the tree of life is uh, manifesting from uh, what isn't to what is. So manifesting of what isn't to what is. Yeah, yeah, where you come up with an idea and then you you bring it into creation. So. Well, yeah, we're would that would that be EMC square? Backwards? I think so, yeah. Somebody mentioned that the other day, but yeah, it starts with light and ends really? with matter. So yeah, so basically, absolutely, yeah. Creation yeah, out of thin set. air. All set, Skull. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Well, that really is the difference between the, uh, the, the pentagram and then the inverted pentagram, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um... Where the pentagram is basically, yeah, it's the spirit to formation, uh, where all the way you know, into the physical. And whenever you flip the pentagram so, upside down, that's basically destruction. You know, that that's a uh, like matter of over. Air. No, no, that's that, that's that's completely backwards. It's basically taking uh, spirit and putting it below the material stuff. So you basically value matter more than you do spirit. Whenever you show that pentacle, you value the flesh more than the spirit. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what an upside down pentacle is. Damn. Of course, it's cool looking, so you know. <laughs> that's, that's why people like it. Yeah, because it's a cool looking symbol. It looks good right side up, too, but it also looks cool upside down, so. It looks cool, but I'm just saying what it really represents is just kind of. Not cool. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think Crowley wore. Or. I don't even know when that was invented, but I don't think Crowley had that. Uh, wore it like that, or used it like that. I don't know. Uh, well, you know, when you get right down to it, you know. Because he 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 really one, uh, one wasn't, wasn't for materialism. But see, there's there's times, you know, where you it's just like well, shoot. It's just like whenever yeah. I was when I was telling you about uh, Solomon, you know, he had to get down into that nature of uh, the upside down pentagram whenever he dealt with uh, the two women that was fighting over the baby, you know, because he knew that he had to go there to get 
what it needed to be accomplished, accomplished. So he's like, all right, I'll just split get their the baby attention. In. Right, get their attention. I'll just split the baby in half, and both of y'all can have half of it. See, that'll end it, end the dispute. But he knew that the real mother of the child would be like, no, you know, let the baby live, no. and she can have it. You know. And the other one that was just really wanting it out of jealousy would be like, yes, cut the baby in half, because if she can't have it, nobody can. Or if I can't have it, I don't want anybody to have it, type of thing. And he knew that mentality, so, yeah. And that's how the mother wound up with her child back, is because of well, the wisdom. wisdom of Solomon, yeah. Wait. Tony, like, here's something that I don't really get about, like, some of the things that I watch over on this movie called Deliver Us from Evil. Like, did you really notice the the phrase called, uh, it said, Invo Campus Vida Inferno? That's actually a, it's a phrase in, uh, in Latin, and it's, and someone like Michael Lloyd translated it as the invocation uh, of something from hell. So can you explain that to me a little bit? Are you talking about the? Yeah, I, I to a degree I can, but not uh, absolutely. I'm, I I recognize some of the Latin before you, uh, whenever you said it, but uh, I would have to look it up to find out exactly what it means. In fact, I actually, I actually, it sounds like a. Yeah, I posted up There's on no the Paradigm Shift. Um... I actually posted up on the Paradigm Shift, so draw find it. I actually posted up on my timeline also. Oh, okay. Where's the abyss, Tony? <laughs> it's uh, about. I mean, I I I've, I've heard it many times. Away from like that second star that goes straight on to a morning, just take a left. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> the abyss isn't aware. One. It's a. It, 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 the abyss really isn't a, aware. It is a, uh, a consciousness. You know, it, it is a. It's a state of being. But yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it's a place in vibration that you know exists in, in chaos. Uh, but like, Kabbalistically, uh, would that be? Oh, God? that's Deot. Yeah, that's Deot. Yeah, you have to cross the abyss actually to get the Deot, and then uh, yeah, in in Deot exists the abyss. So that's where Karantan is. I've heard that before, but I don't know the whole story of it. I own a, that name keeps coming up. I'm gonna have to check it out. I swear, man. <laughs> It sounds like a Pokemon, like... Karanza. <laughs> that you're going to meet, like, you track them on the Pokedex. Karanza. The... <laughs> the, an <laughs> the angry beast Pokemon. <laughs> he hangs in the abyss. But, well, see, I don't know, have you ever watched those documentaries? Those Crowley documentaries? like two or three of them on YouTube like each like hours like probably up to two hours uh, maybe no, just I, one hour. I haven't he talks they, yeah, they talk about the whole thing of um, they talk about oh they did some I don't know what they, they, they mess with a poor pigeon or whatever and like they're doing this ritual or whatever, and like the pigeons, like the life force of the pigeon has to go around like this triangle or whatever, and then they're trying to do something to uh, invoke Karan's on, and um, they didn't know what they were doing. Or, and well, I mean, I'm pretty sure they knew what they were doing, but I mean, this was like a big thing back then, you know. I don't even know where Karanzan comes from. Um, well, all I can do is uh, do a search on it. I have definitely heard the name before and uh, read something about it. But there's there's Iwas, and Iwas seems a lot uh, more benevolent. Oh. 
so to speak. I was. Karanzon, also known as 333, Lord of Hallucination. Oh, really? That's what it says in the Biblio de Pleiades. Whatever that means. Karanzon, Lord of Dispersion. Uh, is that like a magic the gather? <laughs> Where'd you find that? Uh, is that Wikipedia? Yeah, I just did a search on uh, Snapdoom. Okay, yeah, you'll see, you'll see it there. But yeah, it's definitely uh, some, like something I probably wrote about. I just wonder where, because I'm saying everything that they got was pretty much from some type of mythology, the Bible. Uh, the Book of the Dead, the Egyptian. Um, I mean, everything they were working with. I'm just, I'm wondering. I don't know where Karanzan came from. But yeah, they always associate it to the abyss. And then there are these words that they chanted. And these words were. I used to do it, and I wasn't afraid, but. Now that I realize, you know, how you can just open things up, uh, I could type it. Let me see here. But yeah, what it says is it's thought that Karantan dwells somewhere near the horizon in an area known as the Abyss. According to some rumors, he must be defeated by anyone adventuring out into the deep umbra searching for a place among the oracles, but it doesn't have any links to what any of that is. So not a very informative post. <laughs> That's true. Okay, it goes like that. Well, what's interesting is it says it originated with John D. and Edward Kelly. Really? Yeah. So it's a form of Enochian. And that's that's why it's familiar, yeah. Yeah, it says uh, it's a demon or devil that originated in the writings with the sixteenth century cultists Edward Kelly and John Dee, with the latter's occult system of Enochian magic. In the twentieth century it became an important element within the mystical system of Thelema, founded by Crowley where he is the dweller in the abyss. Believed to be the last great obstacle between the adept and enlightenment. The Dolomites believe that if he is met with proper preparation, then his function is to destroy the ego, which allows the adept to move beyond the abyss of occult cosmology. So, yeah. Where, where is, they make love with the whore of Babylon? I don't know. I don't remember doing it. Well, they they say they say that she's somewhere in there. I'm not sure. No, I thought I was sitting right, the right here. And then there's sweet Babylon. <laughs> Did you hear me? Sweet Babylon's lips are waiting for you. Oh wow, that's cool. That reminds Wait, what did you say, Tony? I said I thought I was sitting right here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But it's funny that you say sweet lips because of the that ever loving you know, that, woman. You know that song that I wrote that everything, my sultry, I, my sultry kisses entices my lips, and my eyes are filled with vices. But me, I know it's true. The virtues in there too. But yeah, it, and it's kind of cool. I never really thought about that. <clears throat> well, yeah, one of the songs you made, you were, you said something like a whore or something. Mm -hmm. I'm the bitch in Scarlet. Yeah. But yeah. That's, uh, that's me. I am a harlot. I am the bitch in Scarlet, but now I know there's more to life than a settlement's court. So yeah. Mm. And then, uh, then the other one was like, my sultry kisses entices, mine are filled with vices, but me, I know it's true. The virtue's in there too. The virtue's in there. So I write these words, just some it may seem absurd, but now the jig is up. I just try and drink my cup. 
is like a righteous, all loving harlot, scarlet woman. Uh, it's basically, you know, like taking the point of view of Babylon, you know, and saying that even Babylon, if given the chance, can recognize, like, the whole oneness beauty. of everything. Yeah. And it express true beauty. That's where it came from? Pretty much. You know, that's, where, <clears throat> that's where I come up with it. So, I mean, doing these things or trying to find the beauty in the most weirdest places? Or maybe not weirdest, but I'm saying in the most places that you just... Wouldn't expect it. Wouldn't expect. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah That's I kinda, really the uh, dark side? Not, to me, it's not really the dark side. It's like that... Uh, it's pretty much like that lightsaber, you know, it's the Jedi sense of uh, having a, a connection with both the dark and the light and just uh, going deep into the light or deep, in, or deep into the dark and trying to help people find the balance. That's true. You know, and I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to, like, go into the depths of hell and be like, hey, <laughs> did y'all know that you don't have to, like, hang out here? <laughs> There's other ways to be... You don't have to be watching your back all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be watching your back over all the time. You don't have to be like, you know, living living your life with a knife in your holster with a over your shoulder type of stuff. You don't have to do that. You don't have, you don't to, have live to that be, kind of life. And you don't have to be like caring for everybody all the time, you know, and just spreading yourself so completely thin and not being able to you know, in the whole process, you're damaging yourself, and you should, I mean, it's not selfish to consider yourself first, because like I said, it, as far as the whole parable of the feeder, or somebody, or somebody who feeds people that are hungry, you know, if you're trying to feed people that are hungry, but then you, are, you yourself die of starvation, who's going to feed them? Nobody. Exactly. You know, so you have to make sure that you're healthy enough to be in the in the moment, so that you can do what you can, you know, to to help existence in the time that you're capable of doing it. You know, but don't spread yourself thin. It's like choose your battles. You know. That's true. Well, this also, I think, it's like. Uh... Oh, we're going to close off the uh, the live from broadcast. So say bye to the internet. Later, people. Enjoyed. I hope y'all enjoyed watching it. Learn something. Keep researching. That sounds. Question logical. everything.